WTF is going on, eh? So, what has been going on and why since March 2020 particularly, but even from some time before that? So, today in a very short video, I'm going to give you, I think, a great insight into how the world works, essentially, in the modern era. And we're going to start with touching on the WEF, and Klaus Schwab is the head of that. And it's an enormously influential organization. And I can scroll through their partners and all the household corporations are in there. They've, in Klaus's words, infiltrated the cabinets on hidden camera. He said this. And we know Trudeau, Macron, Ardern in New Zealand, all over the world, top politicians have been on their Young Leaders program, which has been going on 20 years. So this is how you kind of aim to run the world and manage the world uh, as a technocracy. You know, you don't create a revolution. You, do, you don't have a war per se. What you do is you infiltrate over decades and bring all the key influencers into one kind of super national body. And then you just manage uh, this as a long game program. So no conspiracy theory. It's all published on. Agenda 2030 is published. You know, the Great Reset book was published and all the plans of the WEF for the world have all been published, uh, even if the media don't cover them. So I'm going to whet your appetite now with a quick clip from Klaus himself. It is important to use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity. So people assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had. Um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal, in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. Um, the the uh, cut which we have now um, is much too strong uh, in order not to leave traces. So there we are, in his own words. So let's dig a little deeper and I'm only going to pull out two things today that are both important and if you grasp both of them then you'll be well on your way to understanding you know what the path forward might be. So the first is a series of letters released which I've just seen uh, and downloaded and it's between the WEF and the Netherlands government and you'll be familiar hopefully that the Netherlands agricultural people and farmers have been under a massive and shocking attack uh, to pretty much take away a lot of their land and kind of reappropriate it to government uses. And this series of letters I'll go through now is very insightful. Okay, so here's the series of letters and uh, the document here linked below, you can read through it yourself, starts with the letter of intent. And it's basically the WEF approaching the Netherlands government, specifically the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Policy in the Netherlands. And they're proposing that they get together to create a global coordinating secretariat, <laughs> reminiscent of Soviet era, isn't it? For the global network of food innovation hubs in the Netherlands. So this sounds all very positive. So I won't go through the detail, but basically it's kind of really, really worrying but biotechnology and nanotechnology is all thrown in there etc but the key thing is that this will be covered under law uh, Netherlands law Dutch law and establish the WEF secretariat in the Netherlands and if you scroll down to page two or three you see that WF is stumping up I don't know around 600k to fund this from 21 to 23 they gave a grant and they're basically getting engaged there and we saw the outcome the early outcome of this kind of activity with the attacks on the farmers in the Netherlands uh, which are ongoing but if you scroll down to page 9 you see a series of letters starting in November 2017 so this was well prepared and congratulations from the WF on your appointment as Minister of Finance so this is the guy they they entered in via and basically they suggest he come over to Davos and start talking about what the WF would like uh, so he did and you can read through the letters going right up to more recently and basically he jumps into bed you know whips off his clothes and they're off and you know very interesting reading but I want to make this video short so I'm going to just leave it linked below for you to read through. 
So that's just the tip of the iceberg, uh, just the tip of the iceberg of what the WEF has been at for the past decades and accelerating recently, of course, with the Great Reset. No conspiracy theory, simply a corporatocracy, a technocracy now really coming home to roost. So that's just the way it is. But there's a higher level kind of imperative uh, behind all of this in fairness and it's around the global financial system and I'm just going to run through an article briefly now and put the link down below to give a kind of a higher level picture so by all means pharmaceutical profiteering and strengthening the pharmaceutical corporate industry to provide further regulatory capture and revolving door with the FDA and get a better grip on the system and extract vast quantities of money out of working people's pockets. Uh, all of that's important and we've seen all the ID cards and everything else but at the top level what may be the real imperative is the necessity to reset the financial system and go to a central bank digital currency uh, CBDC and to have everything tracked and traced, controlled and managed down to the individual. So this article here now, I'll just glance through it quickly again, put the link down below. So here's the second piece. And again, so appropriately titled, don't you think? So what is going on? Well, here Lily on this substack goes through it for us. So she goes through all of the COVID era and all the madness and explains very well what underlay a lot of those things that happened that were unscientific and quite frankly bizarre and insane and explains how social media figured into it and how these assets were leveraged and kind of what happened. But then she goes on to the long cycle and the short cycle. So the short cycle in brief is the kind of 20 year approximate cycle where everything moves up in the financial world and then there's a crash. There's kind of a small reset like in 2008. That was quite a large one. Uh, a whole load of people, small businesses and little guys go bust, get hammered. Uh, the big players generally walk away from it all or get bailed out with our tax dollars. And the system's reset then and can go on its merry way. But the problem is, and anyone who knows finance and fiat money would, would understand, the system has to keep crashing at a regular interval. That's the short cycle. But then over time, it gets to a point where even a common or garden crash won't really fix it. It becomes utterly unsustainable and inflation, hyperinflation sets in and things just go out of control. So that's kind of where we're heading now. And that's the long cycle. And that might be more like 60 to 80 years is that long cycle. Now, at the end of a long cycle, you need a much bigger crash than our traditional crashes that we see every couple of decades. Uh, and this is kind of baked into the system. So often that crash happens simultaneous to a big war like World War II the last time or just some massive impact on the world that makes it less clear that it's kind of a financial reset. It looks more like there's a cataclysmic event and everyone gets distracted and we're all in it together. And then during all that process, well, afterwards, you know, the narrative is, you know, we just went through this cataclysm and now we're building the world back up again. Uh, and you, you can see the way it works. There's, there's kind of a narrative to cover for it's simply admitting, look, this is the nature of our fiat money system. And look, everyone's going to have to get hammered, but we need to reset this gig. Uh, it raised too many questions with ordinary people and people might want to know more and you can't have that. So anyway, that's the long cycle. So I won't read through it all here, but I have the link down below and I strongly recommend you read it. There might be a couple of things in there not entirely accurate, but I just think it saved me the time of sitting down to kind of scope out a lot of this stuff. So a really good resource. And also I have some very cynical people in my network, highly intelligent, who resist strongly conspiracy theory type content. And we've had lots of debates over the last two years, but I was pleased to see that some of those people who read this uh, pretty much agreed entirely with the overall structure of this and, and what it's speaking to. So th they were actually people who usually resist information that seems conspiracy-like, uh, but they're quite uh, sanguine. 
and realistic about this kind of content. So a great read and I have the link down below and I strongly recommend get a coffee, sit down, read it and think about how this reality pertains to you and how do you counter it? There's no easy answers, but at the end of this short video, I will go through a little bit of advice as to how to do your part in countering this anti-democratic, totalitarian in essence uh, drive that's based on brutal reality at the same time and based on a long game of program kind of management that has brought us to this place. And of course, we've seen build back better, uh, yada, 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 like after the war, that kind of idea. We all need to come together and look after the little guy, right? And we all need to help build back the world in an eco-friendly way, da, 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 da. So you get the idea. Right, so between the first exemplar of WEF influence, though again, it's just the tip of the iceberg, so what's being managed over the last few years with the Netherlands specifically, uh, that's just a tiny insight. So multiply that by a huge number uh, to be aware of what's going on all around the world with politicians, you know, departments of agriculture, departments of energy, etc., etc., pushing towards net zero and kind of locking down the world in a much more broad way than we saw with the virus. And the second key thing I've just gone through is the overall overarching kind of imperative to reset on the long cycle the global financial system. And the two are intimately intertwined because, you know, all the control of the first and the subjugation of small business and local indigenous or agricultural supplying of food locally to the community and all of that kind of good stuff you kind of need to get rid of that and rip it apart and replace it with a globalized food system that's under the control of the overriding structures so that's one thing uh, but the second thing is that plays directly into you know being able to progress rapidly the financial reset so take away the old break the old down, get it under a controllable, trackable, traceable, ID carded, you know, QR coded system. Uh, and then you're empowered to bring in a new financial system and people can't just say, well, no, we're gonna keep doing our own thing. You know, we have our own local food and we have our own local businesses and we, don't, we didn't vote for this, so we're, we're, we're not going along. Well, you don't really have that choice if your infrastructure locally has been kind of smashed all over the Western world. So they're the two halves of it. Again, I can say it, I'm 25, 30 years in corporate technical problem solving. I'm a brutal realist, a rationalist, and I've been through a lot of corporate politics and shenanigans. I won't get into detail here, but the thing is, and the core thing is, there is nothing conspiracy theory about any of this. It's all published, the Great Reset, the 2030 plans, you know, the all of it is actually out there on the WAF website. Now, the media don't cover it, but that doesn't change the fact that it's all published and it's highly professional highly organized, uh, incredibly impressive, long game, technocratic kind of program. And we see the outputs of it all over the world today. But a lot of people just can't put the dots together. Uh, so hopefully this helped you share and have the conversation about this. The key thing is that to counter this undemocratic kind of totalitarian push, there's no point waving your hands or getting drawn into genuine conspiracy theories and depopulation and mass death and all this nonsense. Uh, it's not about that. So you need to stick to the data. If you don't personally understand pretty deeply any particular area of data or integration or science, then defer to someone who does and who speaks about it in a calm, authoritative manner. So don't contribute to the confusion that's being exploited now by the bad guys, if you will, right? Dead calm, unless there's published data and empirical data and proof for something, right, that relates to this new world, um, don't get into it. And as Matthias Desmet said in my recent interview, the um, 
psychology of totalitarianism. The only way to push back against this mass hypnosis in the masses that's enabling all of this crazy stuff is to stay calm, to stay respectful, have the discussion, ask questions, ask questions about specific published papers, specific empirical realities. And we have one kind of slight positive thing recently. Uh, YouTube have a list of what you get censored for. And the other day they dropped off questioning masks effectiveness uh, in the spread of COVID. And they dropped off the list questioning vaccine in terms of its effectiveness in uh, stopping transmission, etc. So because the scientific reality, which was clear as day from the start a year ago or more, uh, but because it's become so brutally clear now and embarrassing, it looks like some of the censorship clauses are being dropped because it's just getting too awkward to continue them. So long may that continue till we drop them all off uh, and we can speak openly again as a free, you know, democratic Western people, you know, who have autonomy, who have rights, inalienable rights and free speech needs to come back. So have the conversation in the comments down below. Please do subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, and share further. Uh, that's really important. And thanks so much to my Patreon supporters and PayPal supporters. The links are down below if people have the means to support me to keep bringing the data, the integration, you know, bringing ethics and kind of data centricity and logic and rationality and a corporate awareness uh, to what's happening in the world today. So keep the head up and best of luck.